Hi everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we will be completing in today's video. So if you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials. So if that is something you are interested in, go ahead and subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future tutorials. I also offer extra tutorials over on Patreon. So that is linked in the description below if you'd like to check that out. And then before we get started on today's drawing, you just need to download the color palette and then two custom brushes. One is the monoline smooth brush, which is just a different version of the monoline brush that helps us get really smooth lines for our hills and our clouds. And then the other is a static texture brush that we will use on the hills to add some texture. So for the color palette, just double tap the file that downloads on your iPad and it will automatically pop into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. You might need to scroll to the bottom of your color palettes to find it if it isn't at the top. And then for the brushes, you just need to go into a canvas, open up your brush library, find whichever folder you would like to save it in. Maybe you have a custom folder or a patterns folder or something. Wherever you want to save it is fine and then click this plus icon at the top and then click import and find the brush files where you downloaded them. So that is how you will import those. And then I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile and layers needed on the screen and in the description below so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we will get started. Okay, first things first, this is the color palette that we'll be working with today. So let's just go ahead and get started. The first thing that we will do as always is set our background color. To do that, we'll just go to our layer menu, find our background color layer here at the bottom, click on it to open up our color selector and select the first color on the first row of the color palette to set it to this creamy color. Okay, and then once that's done, let's just go ahead and go back to our layer menu, make sure we're on layer one, and we are, we'll just go ahead and get started on the picture itself. So we're first going to draw the ground, which will just be an oval, then we'll draw the hills behind it. We'll add our leaves, our mushrooms, our river, and our rocks, all the fun details. So let's just grab our second color on the top row of the color palette. Find our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab, just the regular monoline brush, not the monoline smooth brush that you downloaded. We'll use that soon, but we just want the regular monoline brush for now. We'll set it to 30% and we will just draw our oval for the bottom. So it's going to be a nice flat oval, so draw it pretty skinny. Hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth and then touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly like horizontal. It'll tilt if you kind of move it around. So we just want it to snap to this horizontal angle here like so. Set a good size and fill it in. Grab your arrow tool. Make sure snapping is turned on in the bottom left. And then we can resize it if we need to. So on uniform or freeform, like freeform if you want to like skinny it up from top to bottom at all. Or uniform if you just want to change the size of the entire thing. And then we'll snap it on our center yellow line here, the vertical yellow line that shows that we're directly in the center from left to right. I just want a little bit of room on each side here like so. And then pretty close to the bottom, still a little gap there as well, but maybe about right there is good. And now we'll just add a little bit of shadows to it. So as we go, we'll add some shadows, highlights, textures, all that. So on this layer, on our layer menu, click on it and turn on alpha lock. Grab our next color in line, the third one on the top row of the color palette, and we'll switch our brush to our soft brush. Under the airbrushing category, we'll use this quite a bit today as well. So soft brush under the airbrushing category, we'll set it pretty low to like, you know, 8% or so. And I'm just going to make a few little sections with this darker color. Just kind of here and there, no real you know, rhyme or reason to where we're adding it, just to kind of add some variation to the ground here. So maybe about like that. And then we will add another layer on top of this to be our a slight texture to it. So on our layer menu, let's add a layer right above this. Click on that layer, set it to a clipping mask. Click the end on this layer to open up our options and we'll set the layer style to overlay. 
we will grab this kind of light greenish color. It's the ninth one on the second row. And then we'll use one of the special brushes that you should have downloaded. So go ahead and find that wherever you downloaded it, the static one brush. Okay, we'll set that to just 100%. It just changes the size of like what we're touching. And we're just going to add this in little tiny sections. So I'm just going to add like a section here, kind of just a nice like little blobby area. We'll lessen the opacity of it soon so it's not so bright and crazy, but we're going to use this same technique throughout the drawing. So that's why we're just kind of leaving it. I'm doing some really small sections too, just kind of variously like so. Okay, then as I said, we'll go to our layer menu. We'll click the O on this layer to open up the options again and lower the opacity quite a bit to maybe like 50%. But this just adds a good texture and then if you decide you want to add any more after you do that go ahead and do so but i just can add it a little bit here and there okay now we're essentially going to kind of do the same thing for our hills we'll draw the hill we'll add a shadow and highlight and then we'll add this texture to it again so let's just go ahead and keep on going what we'll go to our layer menu add a new layer drag the new layer behind our oval layer so we should be right above our background color layer we will grab the third color on the top row of the color palette we will now use our monoline smooth brush that you should have downloaded. We'll have that set to 30% as well. Okay, and for my first hill here, I am just going to start on the left side right where my oval is and start there. And we'll just go and make our hills so our brush is nice and smooth. So that kind of helps make some nice and smooth hills without us having to draw too fast. We can take our time. But I don't love how a couple of these are. I'm going to smooth them out a little bit more. So I'm just going to redo it. But on the sides here, I just kind of focus on making the sides pretty like straight up and down and then getting into the hills. And then once you're done, just connect across the bottom so that you can fill it in. Okay, so that one's not too bad. And then you can still do a little adjusting even. So with my arrow tool, I can like switch it to free form and bring this side in a little bit. You know, kind of something like that. Use your eraser if you need to, you know, to kind of make it meet up nicely and stuff. We'll add some leaves around the edges too, so it's okay if it isn't perfect on the edges. We can kind of cover that with a leaf. But just make sure you like your hills. I might redo mine once more just because I feel like they're all like the same height and I kind of want to stagger them a little more. But get yours to a point where you like it. Okay, that's much better. It's like leaning a little bit. So I'm just going to, I don't know, use this distort and kind of, kind of fix that a little bit. So you can do all sorts of things to kind of make it better. But I think that looks good. Okay. I like that. I will grab my arrow tool on uniform with snapping turned on and center it on my center yellow line and, and see how that looks. Just kind of make sure the edges are meeting up nicely with the edges from our oval. Again, we can cover them with leaves though. So, but like right here, I'll just, for the heck of it, I'll just kind of go through and erase that a little bit so it lines up a little nicer. Okay, so that looks good. So now I am going to do the shadows and highlights and texture to it. So on our layer menu, click on this layer and turn on alpha lock. We'll first add our shadow color, which will be our next color in line, the fourth one on the top row. Switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category. We'll just have it at like 10%. And we'll just do this right across the bottom to add a little bit of a shadow there. Nothing too crazy. Then we'll switch our color to a lighter color than our base color now, which is going to be the second one on the top row that we used as the base color for our ground. So we'll switch to that slightly lighter color and add that just to the tips of our little hills here. Okay, and then to add the texture all over, we'll do the exact same thing we did before. So we'll add a new layer on top of our hill layer. Click on it and set it to a clipping mask. 
click the end on this layer and set this style to overlay. Switch back to our kind of greenish grayish color here, the ninth one on the second row, and switch back to our custom static brush at 100%. And this time we're going to go all over, so I'm just going to do the whole thing without picking my brush up at all. It looks absolutely insane right now. But once you got a good layer down, we'll just go back to our layer menu, click the O to open up our options, and we'll drag the opacity down. This time, maybe even more than before, maybe we'll do like 25%, somewhere in there, maybe even like 20, just to add a very like light texture to it. Okay, we'll just keep on going. We'll make our next tail now. So add a new layer, drag it below all the layers we have so far. Switch back to our monoline smooth brush at 30%. Switch to now we'll make our hill in the like shadow color that we used on our first hill. So it's a little darker as the base color. So this fourth color on the top row. Okay. This time we might make like two hills and now we don't have to worry so much about matching up our edges because we're just going to be behind this hill. So I'm just going to start maybe kind of like halfway through this first hill, go up, make kind of a little wavy line there, connect back to the beginning, fill that in. So that's like one and then maybe we'll do one more on the right side too. So I'll just kind of start again. Something like this. Okay, and now we'll do, and now you can move it around if you need to. I might move mine just to the left a little bit so it's a little bit more centered, but it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, just kind of however you want it to look. Make any other adjustments that you need to, and then we will go ahead and go to our layer menu and do the same thing we did before. So first, let's click on this layer, set it to alpha lock, grab a darker color than our base color, so that's going to be the sixth one on the top row. And we'll switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category, same 10%. And we'll just kind of create this shadow towards the bottom. Then we will switch to a lighter color than our base color. So we'll switch to the third color on the top row. Add this to the tops of our hills for a nice highlight there. And then again, we'll do our texture. So. We will go to our layer menu, add a new layer right above this one, click on it, set it to a clipping mask, click the end to open up our options and set it to overlay, grab our weird greenish gray color, ninth on the second row, switch again to our static brush, and again we'll do just one layer all over, and then go back and lower the opacity quite a bit to like 20%. And we'll do this one more time for our very last hill. So we'll just add a new layer, drag it to the very bottom. And our base color is going to be this sixth one on the top row. We will switch back to our monoline smooth brush at 30%. And we'll probably just do one layer this time to kind of just fill in this back side. But I'll start in even a little further than I did on this second set here. So I'll maybe start kind of right in here. I'll go up. Maybe something kind of like this, maybe not quite that tall. Connect back to the beginning and fill it in. So just kind of whatever you want that last one to look like. I think that looks good. I might want this one in the middle to be a little higher, so I'll start again. Maybe something more like that. Fill that in if I connected it good. Okay. Make any adjustments that you need to for that one, and then we will do our shadows and highlights. So on our layer menu, find this layer, click on it, and turn on alpha lock. Grab our next color in line, which is darker than our base color. It's the seventh one on the top row. Switch back to our soft brush. And add our shadow. Then grab our lighter color, which is going to be the fourth one on the top row. And that will be our highlight color for the tops of our hills. So a little of that in there. Beautiful. Then we'll do our overlay layer again. So add a new layer. Click on it. Set it to a clipping mask. Click the N and set it to overlay. Find our ninth color on the second row. And back to our static brush. 
one good crazy layer and then lower the opacity to 20%. Okay, and then that's it for our hills. So we just want some room in the sky for like a sun and some clouds. I think I have a good amount of room, but if you need to, the only real thing that you can do is like uh, lower some of your layers so you can either squish them together further. So for example, if I wanted to move my back hill down, you would just need to make sure to select the hill and the clipping mask that goes with it. So select one slide right on the other to select it also arrow tool and then you could move it down if you wanted to you could do that for each one you could do it individually you could do them all at the same time i might just move them down just a teeny tiny bit for your top one the front one anyway that's right underneath our oval i would instead set it to free form and like lower it this way so just kind of skinny it up instead of moving it down so that our edges don't get messed up so just do that if you need to, but I think that probably looks great. We're going to now move on to adding the details on our oval here. So let's find the oval overlay layer here. It should be at the very top of our layers. We'll add a new layer right above it. Click on it and set it to a clipping mask also so that we're still clipped to our oval shape. And this is where we will draw our stream first. So we will find our first stream color, which is going to be this seventh one on the last row of the color palette. We will grab our monoline smooth brush again at 30%. And we're just going to start kind of on this bottom left corner here. We're going to make like a little slightly wavy line going off the top right side. And then we'll kind of do that again next to it make a second one there connect them at the top kind of outside of our shape here so just kind of draw an invisible line and then fill it in and this is our stream so make any adjustments to that if you need to i think i will just remake my second line here make it a little wavier okay so make that however you would like and then we are just going to add a slight kind of highlight inside of it so on our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab the next color in line, the eighth one on the bottom row, switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category, and we'll probably lower the size a little bit to like 5%, pretty small, so that we can just kind of hit the inside of this here with this lighter color, make it even smaller if you need to, depending on how skinny your stream ended up being. I just want to hit the inside and give a nice highlight there, like so. Okay, next up on this bottom area is going to be our rocks. So we'll go to our layer menu, we'll add another new layer. Do not set it to a clipping mask this time. We are going to grab our first rock color, which is the ninth one on the bottom row. This nice gray color. Switch back to our monoline smooth brush. Okay. It's still at 30%, that should be fine. So now we're going to draw some rocks. So I'm just gonna kind of zoom in on the rest of this ground here and we'll start with like a horizontal line each time. So I'll draw a horizontal line, hold it down, touch my finger to the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. And then off of that, we'll just kind of make a good rock shape and then fill it in. So we'll just make a variety of different sizes and stuff. So I'll do another really small one here, hold it down, touch my finger to the screen, just like one little bump, fill it in. Maybe we'll do another really small one here. Maybe like a little medium sized one. And then either fill it in with your brush or color drop it either way. Okay, maybe we'll move on to the left side now and do some over here as well. We'll even maybe do one kind of up here going up over like our next hill. Okay. 
Okay, so just a good few of those. I end up with four on each side, but you can kind of do whatever works. And then we're just going to give them a gradient also like we've been doing for our hills and stuff. So the bottoms of them will be a little bit darker. They'll have a little bit of a shadow to them. So as always, let's go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab the darker gray color, 10th one on the bottom row. And we'll switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category again. Let's lower the size even more to like 3%. And we'll just touch just the bottoms of them very lightly working kind of horizontally to get a little bit of a shadow on the bottom section of each of them, like so. And then lastly, we're just going to add a tiny shadow next to them, underneath them, on our ground. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu, we'll add a new layer, drag it below our rock layer. It should automatically set itself to a clipping mask to our oval layer, that's fine. Click the N on this layer and drag it up to multiply. So this will be a multiply style layer this time. Okay, we're going to grab this other gray color, the 10th one on the second row now. And we are going to stay on our soft brush, but we're going to lower the size really, really small to like one or 2%. And we're just going to zoom in on each rock and just right underneath it, create the slightest little shadow coming out of it like so. So lower your size as much as you need to. My 2% even might be a little bit big, but it's working. So just right across the base and then sticking off of each side a little bit. Okay, that looks great. And then once again, it's a little too dark. So now we are going to lower the opacity of this layer. So on our layer menu, click the M to open up our options and we'll just lower the opacity just a little bit, maybe to like 70% or so if you would like to. And then that is it for our rocks and our river. So the whole kind of bottom area here done. So next up will be the mushrooms. And then we'll add the leaves after that and then we'll finish off with the sky so we'll make one mushroom and then we'll duplicate it for the others so we're going to make our main big one and then we'll duplicate it and kind of flip it and stuff for our smaller ones and move them where they need to be so let's just start by making a new layer above all of our layers and we will start with the mushroom head itself so we'll grab the third color on the second row of the color palette we will use the monoline smooth brush for this, still at 30%. Okay, and the first thing we're going to draw is the base of it, which is going to be the base of the top part, which is going to be another horizontal oval like we did for this ground area. So I'm just going to start kind of way up here in the sky, draw a nice good oval, hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth, touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. If it snaps to a circle, that just means it's trying to, it thinks you're trying to draw a circle. So redraw it more oval-like and then it should snap horizontal like this. Go ahead and fill it in. Okay, arrow tool on freeform if you need to adjust it at all. I might stretch mine out a little bit from left to right, make it a little uh, skinnier from top to bottom and just wider in general. Okay, make sure you have enough room on the top here for like the top part of it. So I might move mine down just a smidge. Okay, while we're here, let's just go ahead and add the details to this. So this is going to be the bottom part of our mushroom. So it's going to have a little shadow on the inside. Then it's going to have the little like veiny lines through it. So on our layer menu, let's just click on this layer and turn on alpha lock. Grab our next color in line, the fourth one on the second row. Switch to our soft brush under the airbrushing category and we'll set that to like 5% and then just right in the center here add a little bit of a shadow from left to right, not touching the edges at all so it's just contained to kind of the center. So just a little bit like that. 
then we'll draw the veins. So they will be in this next darkest color on our second row, the seventh one in line. Back to our monoline smooth brush again. And we're just going to kind of pick a point to be the center. We'll just stay right there. Okay, and then we'll drop our brush size to like 10% for this. So I already made the little dot in the center, what I'm going to call the center. And then we'll just go off of that in each direction. We will end up covering the actual center of this with like our stem. So it doesn't have to be super pretty in the center there. We're just kind of using it as a base to start all of our lines. So something kind of like that. Okay, and then that is it for the base of our mushroom. So now let's add the top part of it. So on our layer menu, let's add a new layer. Drag the new layer below our oval layer that we just created. And then we are going to now grab the fifth color on the second row of the color palette. Same monoline smooth brush. Let's up it back up to 30%. Okay, and now we are just going to start on one side and draw to the other in a nice smooth arc. Hold it down if you would like to, and it will snap into a perfectly smooth arc. And then you can click this edit arc button at the top, and you can even adjust it. So you can make it taller, shorter, whatever you want to do. I'm probably just going to set mine right about here. And then with our pen again, we just need to connect it now on the sides. So draw from one side to the other, and fill it in. Okay, I'm going to use my eraser tool and just kind of smooth out these edges if I need to. Okay, so it just look, should look pretty seamless. Okay, and then similarly, we'll add some details to this now. So on our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock. Let's grab the next color in line, the sixth one on the second row, slightly lighter, and we'll add a little highlight to the top of it with our soft brush again. So find that. Go ahead and leave the size at like 5%, and we will just kind of draw this across the top in a slightly curved motion, just to add a little bit of a highlight there. Okay, and then once that's done, we can add the dots to it. So same layer, we'll just switch our color now to the eighth color on the second row. Back to our monoline smooth brush again. And we'll just create a bunch of dots. So some will go off the edge. So I'll just kind of make some like this. Some will just be like full blobs or circles of different sizes. You can hold them down if you would like to, or you can just kind of freehand them. So I'll maybe end with something like that. Okay, and then lastly, to complete our mushroom, we just need to draw the stem of it. So we'll go to our layer menu, we'll add a new layer above all of our layers so far. Grab the first color on the second row of the color palette now. Same monoline smooth brush at 30%. And right in the center here, I'm just going to draw a tiny oval. So just draw a nice flat oval, hold it down, touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly horizontal. Maybe a size like this, and that will start the base of our mushroom. Off of that now, I will draw a slightly curved line down into the left, hold that down. I'll extend it, you know, a little ways down towards my ground area. Click the edit arc button at the top if you need to adjust it at all. So I just want a nice slight curve going this way. Start on the other side, do the same thing, another slightly curved line, hold it down, it turned into a line for me, but if I click this line button at the top, it gives me the arc button. If yours turns into a line and it doesn't give you the arc option, just redraw it. Okay, and then I'm adjusting it again, I just want it to be a little wider at the bottom than it is at the top, so I'm just kind of making it wider there. 
Okay, and then this bottom part will be hidden behind our hills, so I'm just going to kind of connect it wherever it's at and fill it in. Okay, now adjust it if you need to. I might make mine a little skinnier from left to right. Got a little wide on me here, and then I'll kind of replace it back in the center of the bottom of my mushroom here. Okay, and then I'm going to add a shadow on the left side. So, on our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab our second color on the second row of the color palette, and switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category. Set to like 5%, still is fine. And we'll just add a little shadow to the left side here, like so. And then that is it for our mushroom. I might make the top just a little smaller. It's kind of huge. So I'm just going to go to my layer menu, select my two top layers. So I'll select one side right on the other. Arrow tool on freeform. I might make it a little skinnier from top to bottom. And then just make the whole thing a little smaller and place it there on the top of my stem like so. So do that if you need to make any other adjustments, but then this will be our mushroom. So make sure you're happy with how that looks. And then once you are very happy with it, we will go to our layer menu and we will snap these three layers together. So we have our mushroom all on one layer. Okay. This is going to be our back most mushroom. So we are going to place it behind our second hill set. So on our layer menu, let's drag it down below our second hill set. So mine has two hills on it there. It automatically clips itself to the back layer, click on it and turn off clipping mask. But it should be placed right about there. I might move him more towards the center. But it should be behind this second hill set right here. Okay, and it's not quite touching like the top of my canvas. It's just kind of right about there. We can still move it around later, but let's leave it there for now. Okay, go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of our mushroom layer. Okay, and then on our layer menu, it will just go up two layers. So it's right behind this first hill set. So just up two layers above this clipping mask. It will probably automatically set itself to a clipping mask. Click on it and turn that off. Okay, arrow tool, let's first move it around a little so it's going to be over on this left side here now, right behind our front hill. Let's downsize it a bit on either uniform or freeform, so it's a little bit smaller than our main middle one here, so it's kind of over here by itself. Okay, we'll make a duplicate of this smaller one now, so on our layer menu, slide to the left and hit duplicate. This one will move up two more layers to be right below our oval. Again, it'll probably set itself to a clipping mask, so click on it and turn that off. And then grab our arrow tool, and this time we're going to do a flip horizontal first. And then we'll move it on over here to the right side. You can downsize it a little more if you would like to. I will do mine a little bit. I'll even kind of make it a little flatter, so mainly just from top to bottom and then place it over here kind of on the right side of our stream nestled underneath our oval here like so and that is our third mushroom and we also moved it because our sun's going to be in the middle here and so the sun would hit on the right side of these two stems and then the left side of this stem so that also is why we did that but also just to make it a little different so those are our three mushrooms, so move them around or resize them anymore if you need to. But I think they look great there. Um, I might end up moving my whole picture down a little bit in a moment, but we'll, we'll just keep on moving along and then draw our leaves next. So for our leaves, we're going to again make three layers of leaves, one to go with each hill and each mushroom. So our first one is going to be right behind this mushroom that we're on right now. So add a new layer, drag it below the mushroom layer. It will automatically set itself to a clipping mask. Turn that off. Okay, grab our first of our brownish colors here on our last row. And we will be on our monoline smooth brush again at 30%. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and get started. So same shape for each one, just maybe a little different angle, a little different size. But we're going to start on the left edge here, and I'm just going to draw one curved line, another curved line. Make sure they connect at the bottom, like underneath our, our like oval layer, and then fill it in like so. Okay, next one I'm just going to do the lines for. So we'll just do a line, 
a line, make sure they connect. But leave it empty. And then I'll leave a space, I'll do another set, make sure they connect. So we're just kind of doing sporadic little, sometimes like two in a set, sometimes not, just one by itself, different kind of angles and stuff. Make sure they always connect at the bottom. This one here, I'll make one kind of poke out from behind our mushroom. And then we'll do another maybe set on the side here. Like so. Okay, and then once those are all placed, all the lines, we can fill in one of them and then click this continue filling button at the top and tap into each other one to fill them in also. That kind of helps us without having to drag and drop each time, but they must be connected. Otherwise you'll, you know, fill in the whole screen. So if that happens, just undo it and, and go back and make sure to connect them nicely. Now let's go ahead and just do some erasing on them first, and then we'll add a slight shadow to them as well. So we're going to grab our eraser tool. We're going to open it up and make sure that your eraser is set to the studio pen under the inking category. So find that. We will set the size pretty low to like 10%. And in each leaf, I'm going to start at the base. that's like underneath my oval. I'm going to draw up this way. Pretty quick, get a nice good line. I'm going to maybe erase a couple lines off of that. And then I'm also going to erase a small cutout on each side. So just like a little triangle or a couple of those. So just kind of something like that. So we'll do that for each one. So line in the middle, a line or two off of that, and then a couple cutouts on the edges as well. Does not have to be too precise or anything. Whatever you end up with will look great. You could even on a bigger leaf add like a third cutout. Okay, pretty simple. Then we'll go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab the next color in line, the second one on the last row, switch to our soft brush again under the airbrushing category. And this is just a slightly darker color. So I'm still just at 5% and then we'll just add this kind of to the bottom halves of the leaves to make them a little bit darker there. Okay, and then we're just gonna make two more layers of this. So on our layer menu, let's find our next mushroom. Add a layer above it, drag it below the mushroom, unset the clipping mask, turn that off. Okay, and then we'll use the next two colors in line. So we'll start with the third one, the fourth one will be our shadow. So third one, switch back to our monoline smooth brush. And now we'll just start on this next hill. So they'll just be kind of coming off of that. So I'll make the little pieces. I will not fill them in yet. various sizes, some alone, some together. And now I will go through and fill them in. And go back in with my eraser.
Okay, and then again, on our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, grab our next color in line, fourth one on the bottom row. Switch back to our soft brush and add a little bit of this darker color to the bottoms of all of the leaves all the way across. Okay, last layer of leaves. So we'll find our next mushroom. It should be our bottom mushroom. Add a layer above it, drag the new layer below it, unset it to a clipping mask. And next color in line, fifth one on the bottom row. Back to our monoline smooth brush. And we'll first just make our leaves. So again, I'll make one like coming off this side, not filled in. Some of them we like might not be able to see behind this other mushroom or something. Just kind of add them wherever you would like to. I'll have one last one coming off the side here that we can't really see all of it, but that's okay. Fill that in. I must not have connected it well. Fill it in. Continue filling. Tap into the rest. Okay, and I didn't do a count or anything, but it looks like I just got like a few less as I got further back. So I didn't really count them or anything, but that's kind of what it's looking like. Okay, we'll erase our cutouts. And finally, go to our layer menu, click on this layer, turn on alpha lock, and grab our next color in line, the sixth one on the bottom row. Switch back to our soft brush under the airbrushing category, and add that across the bottoms. Okay, now that that's all done, I do want to move the whole thing down just a little bit so we have a little bit more room on the top for our sun and our clouds. So if you need to, you might not need to, but if you do, go ahead and go to your layer menu, click on the first layer at the very top, slide right on every single layer below it, all the way down until you hit this last one right above our background color layer, and then grab your arrow tool, and I'm just going to move it straight down just a little bit. So I'll leave it there, leave still a little room on the bottom, but maybe right about there is good. Okay. And now we'll draw our sun in two clouds to finish up our picture. So on the layer menu, add a new layer at the very top, drag it all the way to the bottom, all the way down here behind everything. We'll first grab our sun color, which is going to be the eighth color on the top row. We can switch back to our monoline smooth brush, draw a nice good circle, hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth, touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfect circle, and then fill it in. Grab your arrow tool and you can resize it on uniform or move it around. I might set mine right about here so it's still like a little bit above my hill and then kind of behind this mushroom here is fine. So I'll set it nicely there and then we'll add our clouds on a new layer right above our sun. So on our layer menu, add a new layer right above this one. Grab our cloud color, which is the ninth one on the top row. Same monoline smooth brush at 30%. And similarly to our rocks, we're going to start with a horizontal line. So I'm just going to start right here, kind of right above my sun. On the right side, I'm going to make a nice, good horizontal line. Hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth, and then touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfectly horizontal line. And then with our smooth brush, we're going to do kind of like we did with our hills. We'll just start on one end, go up, kind of make some fun wavy lines, and then connect it on the other side so we can fill it in. So there's our first cloud. And then we'll draw maybe just one more over here. I'll make a nice good horizontal line. Hold it down. Touch my finger to the screen. I might click this line button at the top and just move it down a little bit. Okay, and then we can't really see the right side of it, but I will just start here. Make some small ones. Make some bigger ones. Some small ones again. And then kind of connect it where I think it'll connect. 
and then fill that in. Okay, and then those are our two clouds. Now that that one's done, I might want to move my right one down a little further because they, they're almost like lined up with each other, which I don't want. So I'm going to grab my selection tool on freehand, select around the right one, arrow tool, and I'm just going to move it down a little bit so that it's kind of more on a different level than the left one there. So that just kind of helps fill out the rest of our picture and complete everything. So now that that is done, that completes our drawing today. So I hope you had fun. I hope that you liked the way that yours turned out. If you would like to see more tutorials from me in the future, make sure that you subscribe. And if you want to see exclusive tutorials over on Patreon, again, that is linked in the description below. Also, if you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it there and then tag me so that I can check it out. And while you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.